So now we come to the point where we're going to paint our egg. Now I prefer to use Duncan's matte stains which are actually designed for ceramic work. These are non-fire stains which are very well covering. They're a very good brand. Um, unfortunately they did discontinue a few of their colours earlier in the, I think it was last year sometime. So we are a little bit more restricted than we used to be in terms of colour choice. But don't forget you can always mix colours to achieve what you're looking for. So I'm going to start in this instance by using a sponge. Now this is a very firm, fine textured sponge, very springy, which is ideal for working on the eggs. I'm not even going to bother to moisten the sponge to do this because I know that I can get a very good covering by just applying the paint without any extra water to spread it around. So let's first of all take, let's move these to one side, and we'll take the baby blue. So giving that a good shake, and then I'm going to squeeze a small amount onto the sponge, not too much. There we go, that's enough. And then I'm going to apply this to the egg using a very light dabbing action. And I'm going to try and spread that thinly and evenly all over the shell. I'm not trying to achieve a perfect paint finish in one go. That's not something you should be aiming for. It's far better to apply thin, even coats and a few of them than it is to try to do everything in one go. Otherwise you end up with a very um, thick, unpleasant looking finish. Now you'll see there, this is not a new bottle of paint, you'll see there there are some tiny little lumpy bits on there. So I'm just going to take those off with my fingertip. Dab over again. Just to make sure that those little areas are removed properly. There we are. So very, very quick, very simple. Let's just do the other half. So again, another little squeeze of the paint, which doesn't want to come out. That's better. Oops, that's rather a lot. So I'll just take some of that off there. Okay, and then with the top half of the egg again, that right dabbing action. Now, if I stop here, you can see that there are some little bubbles that have formed on the surface. Now that's because there is too much paint in those areas. So very quickly, I shall smooth those out. The alternative to doing that is to turn the sponge, dabbing very, very quickly again, and just lifting off those little areas where there's too much paint. So let's continue. If by any chance you decide, oh, I need water with this, and you end up with masses and masses of bubbles forming. That's because you've got too much water. In which instance you actually take off, take the sponge, wrap it in some kitchen towel, just take off all the surplus water from the sponge and start again. So that's nice and thinly covering now. So we have our two halves of the shell. And you'll notice I'm just literally holding that just by the very edge of the shell. If you don't get paint right to the very edge of where your fingers, finger and thumb are touching, don't worry too much because that's normally covered by cording. So that's not too much of an issue. Now, because you're applying such a thin coating, this will actually dry quite rapidly. And then when that's covered, you can go back and you can do another coat. Second coat of paint. And you'll see there'll be quite a difference when I've applied this coat. I've also, just as a matter of interest, I have my fingers touching the inside top of the egg as well. This helps to give a cushion when I'm dabbing the paint on, helps to support the egg from underneath, which is always a good idea. Uh, tiny little bits of plasticky bits again, but they soon lift off. There we are. So that's two coats of the baby blue on that half of the egg. 
we may revisit that with a third fine coat just to be on the safe side to make sure that we have a good base colour. And back again. If you find like me that you are trying to get things done more quickly than paint dries and there is nothing worse than watching paint dry, you can actually use a hair dryer to dry the paint. Just be very careful though that when you're using it that it doesn't blow little tiny fibres onto your egg, little specks of dust or anything like that. You want to try to keep the paint finish as clean as possible. There we are. So again you can see that's really coming good now in terms of the paint coverage. One thing I discovered fairly early on is that you don't use this dabbing technique if you're wearing a chenille sweater. I was dabbing away at an egg once and I kept finding these tiny, tiny little fibres on the paint finish. I'm thinking, where on earth are they coming from? Then it dawned on me. I was shedding, shedding these little tiny um, chenille fibres onto the egg. So that was a no-no. I don't think I've ever bought a chenille sweater since then. So something worth bearing in mind. about painting using a brush. Some people find it very hard to get on with using a sponge and that's fine. There are alternatives. The reason I use a sponge is that it eliminates brush strokes completely but if you are using a brush for acrylic paints you should always use an acrylic brush. Now these can be purchased very very cheaply but you'll see in a second that you do get a good smooth finish with them. Again no water on my brush at all. I'm just going from one end of the egg to the other. Now this does apply a thicker coat of paint to the shell, but if you work quickly enough you should get a good finish. Again you may have to go back and apply a second coat. I actually ended up doing three coats with my sponge because I was applying it so thinly. But you see how smoothly that's going on. Some people think that if they spend a lot of money on a brush that it's going to make a much better finish and it's not necessarily the case. Um, you use a brush that is designed for the type of paint that you're using. So acrylic paints require acrylic brushes, watercolour paints require a watercolour brush which is going to be much floppier. You can see how this is smoothing the paint across the shell. It's putting the paint exactly, whoops, a little hair, exactly where I want it to go. Let's just do that end. And there. You can see you do have a relatively smooth finish still. There are two little areas where there is a touch of a of the line of a hair, but not too bad. Compare that with the sponge. Okay, now for the next stage. Now this only works with the very delicate colours, the pastel shades, and this is something that I've been advocating for some years now. I like to use a pastel colour on my shell, but I also like a pearl finish, and it's not always possible to get pearl paints in the colours that you want. Now Duncan's have discontinued all but their golden white and white mist pearl colours, so that eliminates the possibility of using things like ice blue, pink went years ago, various other colours which they've since dropped. So what we're going to do is again use the sponge and I'm going to squeeze a small amount of the white mist onto my sponge. Now I'm using white mist because I think the pale blue is a cool colour. I could use golden white but I like to use the pearly finish of the white mist with these cooler colours like the lilac, the baby blue. So there we have the same technique again. Just 
going carefully around the edges. Removing any little hairs that you see floating around just in case. This unfortunately is the downside of having two dogs who at the moment have decided it's fun to leave hair everywhere. So there we go. Now that's only one coat, but you can see if I contrast that with the the non-pearl finish, you can see that there's quite an area of whiteness to that. Um, the reason this doesn't work with the darker colours is that there's far too much white pigment in the paint. So although it allows colour to show through from underneath for the pastels, if you were to put this over, say, black, it would not work at all well. You'd get far too much of the white on the surface. So that's just one coat. We'll go and do another one on this half now. So again, a squeeze of the white mist and one more time very very quickly dabbing that over the surface of the shell making sure again that I'm supporting the shell underneath so that I'm not pressing down on thin air it's very important to protect the shell as much as possible a little bit more paint just carry on dabbing. Now I'm probably going to need a couple more coats of paint. I might get away with one more. And the way to decide whether or not you need to have more coats is to actually rotate the egg so that the light catches on it. And if there are any dull patches then you know that you've got to go back again and do another coat. So let's get this dried with the hairdryer and see where we sit.